Hey everyone. So I was going through this book, Deep Learning for Coders with FastAI and PyTorch. And in one of the earlier chapters, it mentioned that they use Bing Image Search API to retrieve images for training data. And I thought, wow, that's a pretty cool idea. And they have a nice wrapper for the API in their Python library. But I thought I'd kind of dive into the API itself and use it to build my own way to download training image data. Now, if you haven't heard of Fast AI, it is somewhere that has uh, some really good courses and they're all free and no ads and probably one of the best deep learning courses that, that you'll find out there and actually one of the most thorough data ethics courses that I've seen. But they also have a book uh, here from O'Reilly that they go into some stuff as well. And Fast AI is actually a Python library that pretty much makes deep learning a lot easier. In fact, they they mainly show you how you can use transfer learning on some uh, well-known models that are already out there on your images and all that. Definitely worth a, a look through uh, if you haven't seen this already. It's really a good book. Going back to Bing Image Search, uh, it basically is a way to find images on the, the website. And in fact, if you go to bing.com slash images, it's basically the same thing as doing a search here. So if I search for Aston Martin, you get images of all the Aston Martin cars here. So the Bing image search API basically just automates this for you. In fact, if we go back here, we have this trending page and there's also an API for that as well. So there's the image search API and the trending images API. And there's also this insights API, which if you go back here, that's pretty much this visual search. And in fact, uh, if we go into it here, I think they deprecated that. Uh, yeah, they deprecated in favor of the visual search API itself. So if you want to do that, you would use this API instead of this image in insights API. Why use Bing image search API in the first place? Well, the first uh, and probably most obvious reason is for automation. Uh, instead of just kind of going manually through and doing a search here for Aston Martin and going in, getting all the images and just downloading all the images manually, especially if you want to build a very robust image uh, model with, uh, you know, maybe hundreds or even thousands of images, and then that's going to be quite tedious. And so this automates that for you. Now, a couple of other features that, that I think are very useful for this, and we can do this uh, as we filter the image. One of them is the license. We can filter by license of the image. And the reason we want to do this is if we just get random images online, then we don't necessarily have the rights to use that image for our purposes. And if people who own that copyright, if they somehow find out that, that you're using it without their permission, then they may be able to take some legal action towards you. But this allows us to filter based on license. Now, most of these are Creative Commons licenses, and we can learn more about it here, but most of them, uh, you can have it public where none of the, or all of the rights have been fully waived. So you can pretty much do what you uh, would like to do with the images. The next one is the image type. Now, if you do the search through the, the web there, we can get some, some GIFs, uh, some photos, maybe some transparent items or clip art. Uh, this way we can just say, oh, we only just want photos to be returned so we can use only photos in our training image data. And that way it, it doesn't get a lot of noise with animated GIFs or clip art or drawings or anything like that. And another thing is, and it doesn't seem to have it here, uh, we can filter by safe search setting. And it basically just lets you filter out images that's been tagged as adult content. And so that's just one more thing you don't have to worry about when using this API. You don't have to worry about any any kind of adult content coming back from it. So that, that's another thing that we don't, you know, we just don't have to worry about. We don't have to spend the time on. Those are just a couple of reasons why I think using the Bing Image Search API is is kind of worth it. And now how do, how do we use it? So first of all, we have to create the resource in Azure. So I'm in my Azure portal here. I'll create a resource. Now I'm just going to search for Bing search. I'm going to get Bing search version seven. We'll create one of these. We'll do a name here. Uh, I'll say cars search. 
give us a what subscription that you want it to be on uh, the pricing tier uh, there is a free tier that you can do three calls per second mainly for like demos and proof of concept type things so i'll use that one i'll add it to a resource group then i'll confirm here and i'll just click create and it should be pretty quick to deploy just a couple of seconds here we'll go to the resource main thing we have to know here is we have the our endpoint here and then we have our keys so we can click here to manage the keys or we can go on the left side here for keys and endpoints actually there's an endpoint there i'm not sure what the difference between that endpoint and this one is but we'll use this one now i'll show the keys and this resource will be deleted by the time this video comes out so i don't mind showing these so we'll we'll leave this open and i'm gonna go to a Jupyter notebook and I'm using Azure ML here since they have a lot of pre-installed packages that I don't need to worry about installing. I'm going to start with some imports here, some import requests. And this is the this is the package that we'll use to make the HTTP calls for the API. And if you're not using Azure ML, you would probably have to run a pip install request on it included in our Azure ML instance here. I'm going to import the time module because when we make our API calls, I want to kind of give it a little bit of a delay between each call. That way we don't send too many requests to the, to the server, you know, we're just be nice to, to the server. I, I'm sure Microsoft can probably handle it, but I just want to be nice to it. I'm going to import the OS module. So we can save images to our disk and I'll import pretty print so we can see how some request uh, responses look. All right, so I'll create a variable for our API key and then the endpoint. And we'll just go back here, create our API key and then the endpoint, just capture those. And we need to build a URL here for the actual API call. That's going to use this endpoint. So we'll say endpoint and then we have to add some extra stuff here. Version 7.0 and then slash images and slash search. And we can get this right here under reference to the rest endpoints here. There's the search endpoint and then the, the trending one. And it's an API call, so we need to give it some headers here, but we only have one header. And that is going to be where we supply our API key. And that's going to be called this uh, subscription key header here. And I'll pass in the API key. And then we need to give it some query parameters. I notice the, the headers and the parameters, uh, the query parameters are both dictionaries, which is one reason why it's nice to use requests because it makes that uh, easy on us. Now the required query parameter is the Q parameter, which is our query that we want to do. So I do Aston Martin. Now we can specify our license. It's going to be public in our image type. So we only want photos and then the safe search. I'm going to say strict. All right, and now we can use requests, use the get call, pass in the URL, the headers, and the param, uh, query parameters. And I'll say raise for, st for status. So if we get an error status, it'll raise that as an error for us. And then I'll get the, the JSON on it. Uh, if that if it's successful, I'll get the JSON response. And then I'll call pretty print on the result, the JSON result. All right, so here is a single response here. You notice uh, this is a pretty big response, but there's just a few things that we need to take into account for what we want to do. Uh, first is this this next offset. Uh, what that is is a way that we can page through the different results. So we have this set of images which is around, I think, 30 of them. And if we want to get the next 30, we'll use this next offset as the offset parameter, which I'll show that later, how to, how to do that. Basically, we can page through different results as, we, as, as many times as we need to get our number of images. And then all the way down here in the value, and then there's a content URL. And this is where the actual image link is. So there's a photo right here. And then we can use this URL to download the images to our local machine. I'm gonna clear this output because it is big. All right, so let's make it where we can page through these results here. So I'm gonna create 
a variable called new offset started at zero and then do a while loop and then while the new offset is less than equal to uh, let's say let's, we'll do a hundred here so we get at most a hundred images and then here's where we set that offset parameter in our params dictionary we can create a new one called offset which is what the API will take in and then just set it to new offset so it'll be zero so we get the initial page of results and then we can just take the same code here for requests and then here is where I'm going to use time that's sleep I'm going to sleep for one second between different API calls and then I'm going to use the result to set the new offset so take the result and it's going to be next offset and then now I'm going to get the items uh, that content URL item I'm going to add that to content URLs list so I'm going to initialize that up here and then for each item and result value uh, this is the value is the kind of the list of results here and I can print out the item content URL in fact we can take this set it to a variable and then print that out and then the content URLs we can append to it all right let's run this and see how that goes and we have an error I think my kernel got reset here so I'll rerun these I'll ignore that one and there we go all right so that finished so it's like we got around 100 items uh, in fact we can see how many we have 105 and that was basically due to the paging so our last page had more than 100 items so that's kind of where where it stopped all right so most of these URLs look pretty good but if you look closely some of them don't actually end in JPEG like this one here query parameters on it and then there's another one somewhere yep right here so this one here it doesn't end in, it has a exclamation point on it and another character so there is well, most of it works uh, we have a little bit of cleaning if you want to get everything here we can create a there a path where we want to save our images I'll save it in slash train and if it doesn't exist using OS that path that exists we can use the OS module to make the directory and so for each URL and content URLs there's a couple things to do we have to we can split the slashes here just backslashes we can get the last item which will be like this one for example and then for that item we can check hey, is there an exclamation point on it if there is we'll get the first item there and then kind of the same thing if, if there's something else on it if there are query parameters on it yeah like this one if there are query parameters on it we'll just take the first item as well so we just get the item with the JPEG we'll do that first split so you're on a split it's gonna be on that backslash and then we'll get the last item which would be split and then to get the last item we could do negative one and we could do a second split on the last item we can check if it has query parameters on it and if the second split length is greater than one we can set the last item to the second split uh, first item the second split and kind of the same way there we get a third split on the last last item or well, we do a third split on that exclamation point and kind of the same thing we'll do a check if the length is greater than one we'll set the last item to the first part of the third split and we'll print out the last item double check what we got I thought let's run this and make sure all right, it's like all these are ending in, in JPEGs so now we basically have some clean data you can uh, get the path using OS that path that join get a third path and then I'm gonna join that, that directory path with the last item so it's gonna have that file name on it and I do a try and I'll open the path with the right bytes options on it give it a variable as f and I'll get the image data using request that get on the URL that we get 
up here in the content URLs loop. I call f.write to write to the disk image data.content. And then I'll do an accept OS error. If it if for any reason it can't write to the disk, I'll just uh, I'll ignore it. All right, so we'll try this. There's that train directory. You see items are getting added to it. Wait for this to finish real quick. All right, that finished. Let's see if we can go to one of them here. All right, there's a, it's like an older Aston Martin there. And go to another one. Got some big images. And again, now we'll just try one more. All right, there we go. Hopefully that shows how you can use the Bing Image Search API to get your own image training data. All right, and I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time.